All right, guys, Steve Dean here, and we're doing my review on the FIO M11S. So you can see the box that it comes with, pretty much similar to the M17 and uh, the FIO Plus LTD that I also did reviews on, right? So this just slides out. All right. Pop this open. Get to this in a second. And I've already unboxed this, so basically, this is just the cover for it. And that just came off the screen, right? So for this one, there's only actually one cord that it comes with. And that is your USB-C to USB cable, which is right here. So USB-C to USB-C, or I should say USB to USB-C. <clears throat> so that's it. You do not get uh, the coaxial digital adapter. And I'll talk more about that when we get into the car. I'm just going to put that aside for now. And... Uh, so this is pretty much it. I'm just gonna power the screen on here. So this is a 720p. This is the resolution. And there, we'll see how long it takes for it to uh, to come on. It's not too long. It's not as quick as a, as a smartphone, obviously, but uh, they're getting there. So some of the features with this, it uses the dual ES9038 Q2M DAX. It's got the Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon uh, 660 and uh, this thing's actually quite a bit more powerful uh, these like even compared to the M11 plus this thing is 670 milliwatts output power right and then um, like I said it's a five five inch 720p screen right and um, Android 10 it says it says it's about 14 hours battery life I'd say more along the 10 to 12 hours right which is still pretty good. And uh, so that's the front there. You can see uh, the wallpaper that uh, Fio uses for this tab, right? And we'll start on the top, which there's absolutely nothing up there. It comes with the actual clear case, right? Um, so instead of a volume wheel, uh, you've seen a similar trend with the M11 Plus LTD ESS and the M17. Well, actually the M17 went with the uh, the wheel up top, right? But uh, the M11 Plus, LTD, and ESS were the same as this with like the slider for the volume wheel. And then you have your uh, power on and off button up here. And then this one you can use for, to select uh, like your favorites or whatever you want it to do, right? You can use this button for that. And then when we go along the bottom here, you're gonna see your uh, coaxial digital out, uh, your PO and your uh, um, line out jack all in one here. But like I said, you have to actually purchase the coaxial digital adapter separately, right? And uh, I'll have a link in the description to that. And like I said, I talk about it more when we get into the car. So this is where your USB-C to USB cable goes to power the unit. Uh, you got your balanced uh, 2.5 out here, right? And then your 4.4 balanced as well. And then on this side here, you're gonna have your uh, micro SD card right here. And then you have your, see if I can zoom in here a little bit on these ones. So this is your play pause button here in the middle. And then your track uh, skips up here and down below. So that's everything on the FIO M11S. And um, normally I'll do all my settings on here, but the settings are identical to the M11 Plus LTD that I did a review on. And they're pretty much identical to the M17. Uh, so in order to make this review a little shorter, I'm going to skip showing all the same settings. If you want to see those settings, I'll put the links in the description to the M17 and the M11 Plus LTD. At the start of those videos, probably about 5-10 minutes in, I show you all the settings, which are going to be the same as this. All right, so let's go into the car and let's talk about the sound quality. All right, guys, we have the FIO M11S hooked up in my car audio system. 
And uh, the reason I'm filming this review at night instead of the day is because in the day you get uh, quite a few glares on the screen, right? And it's just for easier for you guys to be able to see it at nighttime, right? So without further ado, uh, I'm just going to tell you guys one of the, you know, one of the cool things that I liked about uh, the recent few adapts is the wallpapers, right? And they're all unique on each DAP, depending on which one you get. So for the M11S here, you can see it uses the dual DACs and it uses the ESS Sabre DACs, which are the 9038Q2M. So you can see that there. Um, and they're a pretty popular DAC. They've been in quite a few different products uh, since like 2021 uh, up until now, right? So you can see it's a really nice screen. Uh, comes in really good at nighttime, right? Um, obviously it's not as big, right, as the M17, but it's still, it's still decent screen for nighttime, right? And this is probably, you know, cause the argument before was, is the M7 even portable? And to me it is, uh, but for the, the majority of the people out there, they usually say, no, it's not because they say it's too big, right? I don't mind things that are big. I like big screens, the bigger, the better for me. I have, uh, you know, the iPhone 13 pro max. I've always got kind of the max versions of phones, right? Um, cause to me, I always like a bigger, right? The bigger, the bigger, the better. <laughs> so that's kind of like the shot of that, that I wanted to show you guys. Cause it looks excellent at nighttime. Uh, you can see it's got like uh, the clear cover on it. Right. And, um, the second thing I kind of wanted to show you guys on here, and I did a video about it probably a few weeks ago and it was on MQA, right? And that was specifically related to the M17. And uh, without making, you know, a long story too long, I'm just going to keep it keep it short. Uh, basically, the FIO M17 will not play MQA right now in its current stage um, via the coaxial digital output, right? Uh, FIO, because I emailed them, we kind of went back and forth. Uh, and then they realized, yeah, it doesn't play by the coaxial digital output. They're supposed to have an update or they, you know, there will be an update. I would imagine if they can fix that issue at a later date. Right. Um, because I kind of reached out to both MQA and, uh, FIO at the same time and kind of copied them on the email. Right. And MQA said, yeah, no problems. They can play via coaxial digital output easily. Right. No issues whatsoever. So for those of you guys that have the M17 DAP, there'll probably be an update at some point in time that will let you uh, be able to play the MQA out of the coaxial digital output of the M17. So now back to the M11S. Uh, for anybody that buys the M11S, you're going to have no issues playing MQA whatsoever out of the vi uh, via the coaxial digital output. And I'm going to actually demonstrate that right now, right? So I've got this album, uh, Linkin Park, right? It's a great album. I got this, uh, downloaded from HD tracks and, um, it's actually the only album that I have in MQA, but I have lots of stuff that are MQA, obviously untitled, right? But for this video, I'm just going to show you guys that uh, MQA will play no problems whatsoever out of via the coaxial digital output. And it's right out of the box. You don't have to change any settings or whatsoever. It'll just play. And even if you go in and switch any of the settings, it'll still play, right? So I'm going to show you that right now. So we can see with the director up here, because I have a Helix DSP Ultra in the back, uh, you can see I have it on via uh, digital coax, right? So I'm just going to hit play here and you're going to hear it. It's so going to mute it right now. You can see it's on MQA, right? So 48 uh, kilohertz, 24 bit MQA, no problems whatsoever. All right. So now I'm just going to pause that. We're going to go into the actual settings on here. And in the settings here, you can see just basically like the M17 and the M11S and pretty much the majority of the uh, recent field DAPs, right? You're going to see this where it says MQA SPDIF, right? So you can go in here and it's on decoded MQA. This is standard. That's what it comes on. Like I, I was just showing you right now, it plays no problem whatsoever. But for this video, I'm actually just going to show you that it doesn't matter which setting you pick on here. It'll play fine, right? So we'll switch over to Bitstream, hit Confirmed. I'll go back into the Linkin Park album, that's MQA, right? And I'm just going to hit play again, and then I'll have to unmute it up here, which you guys can see. So you can see it plays no problems whatsoever. You can see I just didn't unpause it on here. You can see the MQA symbol on there. It plays it no problem via the coaxial digital output, all right? So now, 
just because there's other people that have mentioned these other settings that I'm going to show you too as well. Um, so I'm just going to go on here, back here. I'm going to switch it back to NQA, hit confirm, because that's, that's what it comes standard with, right? When you actually get the DAP, that's how it is standard, right? So we're going to get out of here. And I'm just going to go into the settings in, in, in on here, and you go into audio, right? So these are the other uh, settings that you can change uh, with this DAP when it comes to the SPDIF out. And these are the only other settings that you can control via the SPDIF out. So you can see it's on DOP, which comes standard uh, with the M11S. I'm just going to show you that even if you go to D2P, it'll still play no problem whatsoever, right? So play... And then I just have to unpause it again up here. So there you go, guys. Doesn't matter what setting that you have it on. MQA will play fine regardless. Because there's there's a ton of people, especially the people that follow my channel, um, that use Tidal, right? And I just wanted to demonstrate that for you guys. That that will play no problem whatsoever. Uh, regardless of which setting that you use, right? Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you guys. So the second thing I wanted to show you guys is Android Auto. But before I show you, uh, show you guys kind of how it works on here, it's very similar to all the other, uh, like the M17 that I showed on there, the M11 Plus LTD, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, all the recent field dApps do Android Auto. But the thing with Android Auto and even Apple CarPlay the sound quality is only going to be so good, right? Um, with a FIO DAP, it's going to sound slightly better than if you were using your phone. Uh, slightly better, right? And it works um, kind of similar to how I've described the sound quality of if you're using coaxial digital out as opposed to like analog output, right? Each device, regardless of how you have it, you know, hooked up, um, you'll get a different kind of like sound signature. Like if you do Android Auto or if you connect this thing out of like the, you know, a 3.5 output um, or like, you know, 4.4 or whatever. Like if you go in balance, that type of thing. It doesn't matter how you hook it up. You you tend to get like analog will have its own sound signature. Coaxial digital will kind of have its own sound, own sound signature. And then even when you do what I'm going to show you in a minute here, which is Android Auto, it has kind of its own sound signature too. You just can't expect the same sound signature from Android Auto or even Apple CarPlay than when you have a DAP going straight into your DSP, right? It's just not going to be there. And even for those people that don't have a car audio system and you don't have a DSP and you run like a DAP uh, into your auxiliary input, the sound signature is still going to be better doing it that way than going Android Auto, right? So I just wanted to let you guys know that before because some people get excited because they like having the artwork show up on here and they think you're going to you're gonna get the same sound quality uh, doing that as you would those other like analog or coaxial digital. You're not, right? The best way to run any DAP is to go into a DSP. And depending on what DAP it is, because it depends. Do you if you have a flagship DAP, chances are you're going to run it analog, not coaxial digital. If you have like, you know, I would say, and you can't really put a price range on it because you'd have to test them, right? But I'd say you know anywhere, and I am going to put a price range on it because from the DAPs that I've seen so far uh, that are out there, I'd say probably you know something around the fifteen hundred dollar range and down you're probably going to go coaxial digital if it has that option or optical because there is some dApps out there that have optical out too as well, right? Um, but for the most part, how it kind of works, if you got a flagship dApp, like you have an Astelon current SB2000 or SB3000 that just came out, or you have the FIO M17, right? Or if you have the Cayenne, um, what is it, the N8 or whatever it is, um, or if you have the Ibasso DX320, Chances are you're going to run those things analog and not digital, right? So I just wanted to let everybody know that before I'm actually showing you Android Auto because I don't want to give your hopes up like you're going to get a DAP and all of a sudden you're going to get this magical sound out of it. It doesn't, it still sounds decent, but it doesn't sound as good as the ways I was just describing, right? So we're going to put that in here. And basically, 
all it is, it comes with the cord anyways. It comes with a USB-C to USB cord. And this is my own cord that I have, right? That I just keep in my car. Um, but any one of those cords will work. And basically you just plug it in like you would Apple CarPlay. Android Auto is the same, right? So I'll just this end is going to go into one of your uh, inputs in your car, right? So if I got it right. And as soon as you do that, you can see it switching over to Android Auto right now, right? And actually, in order, and I'm just going to well, actually show you. See, right now, so now I can switch over to digital optical. And it'll play, right? So before you can actually hook the device up, you actually, you actually have to download the Android Auto app. And with that comes three other apps. It'll be this voice. Uh, you can see the apps right here. So it's Google Maps. Uh, the voice right here, uh, one, and then there's your regular Android Auto. And it also downloads uh, Google, which, uh, where are we at right on here? I think I deleted it, at the, or actually, no, it's right here. <laughs> I moved it down to the bottom here. So it'll download those three um, apps, and once those three apps are downloaded on your device, then all you have to do is plug it in, and it'll, it'll uh, kind of walk you through the setup. It's really easy. It takes like, you know, 30 seconds, and you're hooked up, right? So like I said, with Android Auto, it's um, switching it over right now. I just had to hit the button. It'll go into the Google Maps right now. I got it on. Right now, I got Apple Music hooked up to it. So there we go, right? So there's Android Auto for you. And like I said, I'm not going to walk you through uh, Android Auto. Anybody that has like an Android phone, very familiar with Android Auto. And like I said, the sound quality is not going to change much from your phone to adapt. It might be like really slight, not a big difference. The biggest difference with these things is when you hook it up um, either via coaxial digital out or analog, right? And uh, that's when you're going to notice the biggest sound quality changes. So either A, you have a DSP in your vehicle or you have no system whatsoever or maybe you just have like a passive uh, system, then you connect it via the coaxial digital, or not, sorry, then you connect it via the auxiliary out if you have no DSP. Uh, if you want the best sound quality that something like this can produce, right? And it sounds really good. Like I said, when I test things, I test things out of every output, right? Uh, every input, if in that case, like with the, the M17, it has, you can switch their coaxial digital out to an input, so you can test different things that way too. This one you can't. This just has the coaxial digital output. But like I said, you have to buy the cable in order to use it, right? Um, but it, it sounds excellent via, you know, auxiliary jack in your vehicle too. You just have to be aware if you're using the auxiliary input in your vehicle and you're charging this. Um, sometimes you might get some noise issues, right? And it's usually ground loop noise uh, for the most part. Usually if you're playing music, it's fine. It's when you stop the music and you're charging it right then you might run across some issues but when music's playing there's no problems like whatsoever when you're charging it but i would say if you're going to go the auxiliary in route and you don't say you don't have a um you know car stereo you just used it for your factory stereo just have it charged right when you're going to go going to bring it into your vehicle because it does make a big difference using something like this just even with the a, a factory stock uh system it makes a big difference and it makes a, I would say it makes one of the biggest differences before you even go decide to upgrade your amps or your speakers or anything like that. That's when I would probably get something like this, right? Um, but anyways, that's Android auto. And, uh, I pretty much like when I test everything, I test things, you know, the main two apps is, as you can see right here, we got Apple music and title and then I also have like lots of downloaded music, which I was just showing the MQA one on here. But I got lots of downloaded music that I use on here too. And this is all HD tracks or acoustic sounds downloaded. And then I have some CDs on here too. Uh, I put the majority of my CDs and stuff on the M17 because this is my kind of my flagship DAP. And pretty much everything I test will go up against this thing. If I find something that's better than this one day, then we'll switch it out. But for now, everything, I don't compare everything to this, but I do for my own personal taste because once we get something that sounds better than this, then this will be replaced. But for now, 
this is the best product that I've listened to in my vehicle at this point in time that I use as a source unit, right? So, like I said, I test everything with, a, you know, everything from like jazz, uh, pop, rock, hip hop, rap, like you name it, classical, all the different uh, genres I test on here when I'm testing every every product that I get, right? Because you can't just test a few songs on here. Um, I have had this thing for probably three weeks now, and I always like to put everything through its paces, right? Because when you're giving a review out you and you're giving your honest opinion on something, you basically want to let everybody know, you know, I listen to this thing with everything. There's some reviewers out there that just get a product, they listen to a few songs and that's it, and then they do the review. I'm one of those type of people, I like to listen to a lot of different music, a lot of different genres, so I can hear what sounds the best, right? What's, what's you know, does, does uh, you know, old 70s sound better, right? Because sometimes I've noticed with a lot of the newer products, a lot of the older music just doesn't sound as good, right? And I don't know why that is. Um, it might be the, you know, the change from the AK DAX to the ESS versions. I don't know. But uh, I found that some of the older, like, you know, 60s, 70s type music, not everything, but some of it is kind of, uh, it's 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 kind of got like a higher pitch to it, I found. with You know, like when you're listening to like Van Halen and stuff, there's just not that many bass and whatnot. Um, I'm finding some of the newer products recently, they'll play the new music pretty well um but then they'll sometimes struggle with the older music right that's that's kind of what i've seen with a lot of different devices but uh i'm gonna jump in right away with the sound quality part of this because i know that's pretty much what everybody's waiting for right so how does this thing sound right and since this is the m11s the thing that i'll be comparing it to the most will be the m11 right and the m11 plus ltd which i also did a review which I'll put in the description too for people that haven't seen that review. If you're trying to decide, you know, I don't even know if you can still get the M11 uh, LTD. I know you can get the ESS version now because that's kind of replaced it, right? The LTD was kind of a limited uh, version, the uh, the FIO M11 Plus LTD. That was a, like a limited v version. So you might be able to find some of those online still. I'm not sure. But um, if you have an option between the LTD and the ESS, Go for the LTD, because from what I've seen from all the people in my comments, they kind of preferred that one better, if it's out of those two, right? So for the M11S, it's... And right now, I'm going to talk about the coaxial digital output, because that's, for the most people that are into core audio and you have a DSP, and you're not looking to spend like 2500 bucks on an M17, um, this was 699 Canadian, is, and I think it's four ninety nine in the U.S. But for this particular DAP, it's not. It's not like you can say this is the budget. This is the budget DAP because seven hundred bucks isn't really budget, right? Um, it's their entry level DAP now out of the new out of the new DAPs that they brought out, right? Are they going to bring something um, budget related in the future? Kind of like what the what was it the M seven and the M nine? I think they were. Um, possibly, I don't know, but as of right now, out of the new DAPs, this is the least expensive one you can buy right now, right? So the M11, I, I have to, I have to mention the M11 cause the M11, like the original that came out, I think I came out in 2019. That was one of my favorite DAPs of all time. Like for the price point, you could not beat that, Right. The only downside to that is people that like Apple Music, like I do. I like the now that they have lossless light. I didn't really care too much about Apple Music before, but then when they released uh, Apple Lossless, that's when I kind of I liked it because it's you know for me you can only pay nine ninety nine instead of like twenty twenty bucks or whatever or even more for a title, right? So it's like half the price of title, and you're getting lossless on everything, right? And you can debate the lossless versus like the MQA lossy all you want. Right, that's one of the reasons why I showed you guys the MQA stuff earlier for the guys that love MQA. I'm kind of not a at this point in time. I'm not a huge fan of MQA, so I kind of stick to Apple Music now. But what, through my days with the old M11, that's all I listened to was Tidal, and then of course my downloaded music. Right, so 
the M11, the M11, especially out of like the the coaxial digital output on the M11, had an excellent sound signature to it. It especially for the price point, it it, it was just insane how good that sounded. Right, um, you can't go wrong with an M11 via the coaxial digital output into your DSP. If it doesn't sound good, that's a tuning issue or an install issue. It's definitely not an M11 issue because that was like one of the better sounding DAPs um, out of the coaxial digital output, right? And people are probably saying now, well, Dave, and anybody that's watched my other videos already knows my response to this right now, but people are saying, Dave, well, it's out of the coaxial digital output, so you're not using the DAX inside, you know, the old M11 or this for that matter. Um, you're going to use the DAC chips inside, you know, whatever you're connecting it to, whether it be a DSP or a home receiver or whatnot. Uh, that is true, but still it has its own sound signature, right? Because like I said, I've had quite a few of the field DAPs from the X3 Mach 2, I think it was, to the X5 Mach 3, to the M11, to the M11 Plus LTD, to the M17, to now the M11S and every single FIO DAP and product and every other product that I've tested out of the coaxial digital output all had its own unique sound signature. And with the FIO DAPs, they sound nothing alike. There's not, they're not even close, right? Each sound signature from all of them are totally different from one another, right? And I have an extremely revealing system. Um, you know, for those of you that have seen my other videos, they know that, uh, uh, in Canada, I was the, I think I was the second overall for just scores, no matter what class it was, right? Uh, uh, in all of Canada, right? And that was in 2021. So, you know, I have an extremely revealing system. And um, I can tell you when I've changed, you know, each DAP in here, they've all sounded totally different via the coaxial digital output. And then they also sounded different using the analog outputs, right? So those of you that seen my review on the M17, you know I preferred the analog outputs on it rather than the coaxial digital. Coaxial digital output on the M17 still sounds friggin' amazing, but every, every output on the M17 sounds amazing, right? Uh, but I just slightly preferred, because it's, it's just slightly different, the analog output on the M17. Um, rather than the coaxial digital, right? Just a slight difference, but I preferred that. So getting back to the M11S, so what's its sound signature via coaxial digital out? It's, you know, because I, I mentioned the M11 Plus LTD having like a deep, a deep signature to it, a deep sounding signature, like deep, deep bass, deep mid bass, just like deeper in the vocals, that type of thing. Um, and then the M17 was just, just balanced, right? It was like a balanced sound. Everything sounded really good. Didn't matter if it's the bass, the mid bass, uh, the mids or the highs. It all sounded really good and really balanced, extremely tight and fast response to the music, right? Now, so when we get into the M11S via the coaxial digital output, it has kind of a, I would say, a bright sound signature to it, right? Um, it's the only way I can kind of describe, uh, and it's more the top end than anything, but if I was going to describe this DAP in any way, I would say it's, it's bright. It's a bright sounding DAP, right? So with the bass, because we're going to, I'm going to go through everything like I normally do with the reviews. Uh, for the bass, and, and it's weird to sound, you know, talk about bass being a little bit brighter, but it's, it's I would say the bass isn't really bright. It, it's a little bit thinner, I would say, on the bass sound, right? And then when you're translating, I mean, the bass is still, it's still tight, but it's just, it's a little bit thinner sounding than I would say the rest of the DAPs that I've reviewed, like the M11 Plus LTD, uh, the M17 and even some of the other products that I reviewed, right? I, I would say the bass is a little bit thinner, uh, and that translates into the mid bass too as well. The mid bass is a little bit thinner too as well. You don't get that deepness that you do in the, M, the M11 Plus LTD, and you don't get that balanced, tight, fast response as you do with the M17, right? 
And I'm not expecting this DAP, you know, after listening to the other ones, I'm not expecting this DAP to have those kind of sound signatures as those ones do because they, those DAPs cost quite a bit more, right? Uh, I mean, the M11 Plus uh, LTD was like 200, two to 300 bucks, depending on where you bought it from, but that was a difference in those, right? And um, so I'm not expecting it to have the same type of sound signature as those, but I preferred the old M11 sound signature, especially in the bass and the mid bass uh, response. I preferred that better, right? Now, where the M11S shines is when you're getting into the mid. So female vocals, male vocals. Uh, I think that is probably in its sound signature, probably is the best department. And for me, the ESS chips, that tends to be where they sound the best in anyways, is usually like in the mids, right? And, um, I mean, anything that's like, you know, playing Sting or anything that's like has that soft, like softness to it, right? Um, you re where you really notice the vocals and the vocals are really coming at you. Um, that's where I notice this DAP kind of shines, right? And the only kind of negative that I can say is when you get into the high end, right? And that's where that bright sound signature comes in. And not just via the coaxial digital out, also analog, but analog I actually liked better. When I ran this thing via analog, I actually, you guys might have seen that like short video I did uh, where I like took apart the Helix DSP Ultra. I was actually adjusting the settings to match up with the M11 S this time around. And then after I finished doing this, um, then I actually tuned it for the M17, right? And I enjoyed the M11S, especially on the highs, better via the analog output than I did via the coaxial digital output, right? And which is kind of odd because it was the opposite of the M11. The M11, I liked the coaxial digital output on it, the sound of that better than I did the analog, right? So with the coaxial digital output, the highs... I found not on every song, but quite a bit of the music, you can hear the brightness to it, right? And depending on what speakers you're running, like I got the Audio Frogs uh, GB60s and the GB10s in here, and the GB10s, they're not necessarily bright, but depending on what song, like if you go into like, you know, something, you know, Van Halen and things like that are already kind of bright anyways, but they kind of emphasize that type of music even more. So if it's normally recorded a little bit bright or thin or like tinny, you know what I mean? It'll kind of emphasize that a little bit. The audio frogs are kind of like that, even though I got mine toned down a bit. So you don't, you don't notice it. It's, they're not sharp or anything. They still sound really good. But that's the tonal quality on them would be like out of the box a little bit on the bright side. And then you just got to use your DSP to tune it down a bit, right? Just like you would with anything. But I found with the M11S, you could really hear it via the coaxial digital out. And then when I tested it via the analog out, it was, it was more subtle, right? And that's why I preferred... Um, I, that's why I preferred like the analog outs better than I did pref than than I did the coaxial digital out right. And sorry if my camera's shaking a little bit right now. I'm trying to do this with my car off, and uh, it's a little cold out there. But uh, uh, yeah, so if you see the the camera shaking a little bit, that's why it's it's not warm out here right now. So let's tap this guy back. So overall, uh, the sound quality is good. Um, but it's, like I said, it's a little bit on the bright side via the coaxial digital out. And then if you use the analog outputs, I think you're going to get a little bit like a better sound quality overall. If you're using that in my experience, that's what I preferred anyways, was the analog outputs out of this. And which was kind of surprising, right? Cause I was thinking the M11 S I actually loved the M11 and, uh, 
I thought for sure that going coaxial digital out of this thing would sound better. And to me, to my ears, it didn't, right? And depending on, like I said, depends on what speakers you got in your system. And it, and it kind of works the same as headphones, right? Um, if you have a little bit, you know, more, more of like a Morel speaker or that type of thing, you probably aren't going to notice it as much. So if you got something with like Silk Dome tweeters, I don't think you're going to notice the brightness as much. But I have to mention it on the review because if somebody goes and buys this product and then they put it in their vehicle, you have to be aware that you might get, you know, that type of a sound signature out of it. And like I said, it, it's the same thing with like headphones. You want to match it up with something like a softer sounding um, speaker, right? And uh, uh, to me, I would I would recommend going analog versus going coaxial digital out and maybe that's why Fio didn't <laughs> include the adapter with it this time around I don't know but um that's kind of what I got and I and and you get that kind of sound signature on pretty much every type of music you just don't notice it as much on some of the newer music right but if you go into like some of the stuff and especially the 60s and the 70s um and even some of the 80s stuff depending on the recording too as well then, you know, you're going to notice it. You're going to notice it quite a bit more, right? So, to me, that's definitely the sound signature to the M11S. Is It's on the brighter side, right? And, you know, for, for those of you out there that are like, you have an M11, unless you love Apple Music, I wouldn't recommend going into this DAP because I, if you're going coaxial digital, out of the M11, stick with the M11 because it has a better sound signature overall to it, right? And I would say far better sound signature, right? Uh, overall, if you're going to go analog, then I would say the M11S has a better sound signature than the M11, right? So you you really got to keep that in mind. How are you going to hook this up in your system? If it's going to be going analog, then I'd recommend going from an M11 to this. But if it's going to go coaxial digital out, stick with the M11, right? Um, because I can't tell people, yeah, go get this for the co and, and use it coaxial digital out because I don't think you're going to be happy with it. I would say if you got the M11, stick with the M11. If you don't have a DAP, I'd recommend going into, if you can get a FIO M11 LTD, go into that. Um just because it has a better sound signature via the coaxial digital output than this does, right? And I think it's only, it's either two, I think in the US it's like 200 bucks more if you can even find them still, right? Um, I mean, you can adjust some things on your DSP if you have a DSP, right? Uh, but there's only so much you can do with the DSP too as well. So that that's pretty much my thoughts on the M11S. Um, I was expecting more, after the M11, because the M11 was was fantastic, right? And I was actually expecting more with the M11S, and I was really excited. And don't get me wrong, it still sounds really good by the analog outputs, but for whatever reason, the coaxial digital output, and a feel, if you're watching this right now, I don't know what you did with the M11, but the M11 via coaxial digital out sounds a lot better than the M11S, right? So I don't know if it's because you had to upgrade, you spend more money on upgrading the screen, um, upgrading the DAC chips, that type of thing. But I think the majority of the people out there, you're going to like the M11 via coaxial digital out than you are the M11S. So if you're one of those guys, don't bother upgrading to this unless, you, I said, like, like I said, unless you like Apple Music. Um, because if you're good with Tidal, stick with the M11. Unless you, you're, you know, you're looking for something for headphones, then this will blow the M11 away via the analog outputs, more power, better sounding, uh, just everything's a check mark on this thing, right? If you're wanting it, if you're wanting it for your car, go analog, and then also it's excellent with the headphones. It's still a bright sound signature to it, just not as bright, right? So that's it, guys. Those are my uh, thoughts on the M11s overall. I'd say it's, it's, it's a good product, but comparing it to an M11, which is, you know, this is supposed to be superior to the M11. It is by the analog outputs, but by the coaxial digital out, it's not, right? 
So that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you do, like, subscribe, um, hit the bell notifications so you can uh, be aware when I'm uploading uh, new new videos on reviews and other stuff car audio related. All right, that's it, guys. Have a good one, and we'll see you on the next one.